know that OpenAI has two ways to put data into their system to have a chat with their AI. The first way is via their web interface. The second way is via their APIs or their application programming interfaces. These are not created equal and they do not protect your data in the same way. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I will show you exactly a way that you can use all the full features and more of ChatGPT but without risking your data. Personally think that OpenAI is doing anything nefarious with your data. They really don't need to. They have so much data coming in with up to 100 million users. Yours is just kind of a drop in the bucket. The terms of use are very clear on this matter. If you use the web interface, your data is fair game for testing, for looking, for reviewing, uh, for humans reading it. If you use the APIs, this is not the case important terms that you need to know in order to process OpenAI's terms of service or terms of use in this case. The first one is going to be called input. What you hear in media is about prompting and prompt engineering. Well, this is what you say to the artificial intelligence, to the chatbot, to get it to talk back to you. So that's all it is. The input is what you put in, and that is, in fact, your data. The output is what the artificial intelligence says back to you. It's what the API returns to you or the web interface streams out that text that looks like it's typing to you. The output is also your data. It's your information. It doesn't belong to anybody else, but there's a lot of interest in the input and the output pairs because the way you prompt, the style of your prompt, what you tell the system that you want it to tell you back will dictate the quality and quantity oftentimes of what you receive. An API is an application programming interface. All this is is a machine to machine connection allowing two machines to talk to each other over a common interface. When the terms of you speak of non-API content, what they're talking about is content that you put in and out of the chat interface. And this is the way that 99.9% .9 of people probably use OpenAI. It is publicly stated to be a research organization. Are you signing up to be a research subject? Or do you just wanna use the tool for your business? If you're gonna lead, if you're gonna deploy these new technologies, which you absolutely should in your organization, do not be afraid of these things, just understand them. You absolutely need to know that what you put in can be used in different ways and you need to be mindful about how you do that. The good news is there are absolutely ways to interact with OpenAI's large language models like GPT-4, and protect your information and your data and provide the tools to your team that will give them a true advantage. I use GPT every day. I put sensitive information in there. I get wonderful information back, but I can do it anyway. Why? Because I run a graphical user interface on my local machine and I run it such that it then connects to the OpenAI APIs, thus sending my inputs and receiving outputs over the API interface using encrypted connections. This is what protects me. This is what allows me to do what I need to do with ChatGPT. I use a tool called Chatbot UI to do this. See here is the Chatbot UI interface. It has several key areas. Up on the top left, you can start a new chat. If you click that, you just get a new conversation and it shows you this window. These are folders and where I have saved experiments, uh, things I was doing for my consulting, science, uh, at the bottom, you can clear your conversations, import and export your data. There is a light or dark mode, and there are a new thing called plugins. And on the right-hand side, and this is one of the really awesome pieces of Chatbot UI, is it has a template system. And in those templates, you can template system prompts, which go here, and you invoke the template simply by hitting slash, and it will give you uh, all your templates. And you would pick, in this case, I'll pick um, uh, the MTP design uh, system prompt. This turns ChatGPT into an MTP designer. Uh, you can also choose how creative or literal uh, or precise you want this to be by you adjusting the slider. This feature just came out about a day ago. And then down here, if you hit the slash again, you can pick your different user prompts. And in this case, again, we'll, we'll go with, say, the MTP helper prompt. And what that does as you can see, it brings up this lovely little uh, prompt interface that I've set up, and it allows you to help you define and refine the massive transformative purpose. That's the design of the prompt, and you can see that it has a field here called MTP. And when you invoke this prompt, it's going to ask you uh, what you want to put in that field. So if I choose the MTP helper prompt, it says enter a value for MTP so I can use uh, the Boston Children's Hospital 
until every child is well. And I put that in there and it, you'll see that it replaced the template uh, field with the MTP and then goes ahead and puts the question, is this a good MTP? And then if we hit enter and we select GPT-4, I'll, you can see that you can change it from 3.5 to 4. In this case, I'll use 3.5 and we'll hit enter. And so it's going to come back and it's going to start telling you that until every child as well could be a good MTP, but it might need some refinement. And then it gives you lots of information on how you might refine that. Amazing, amazing tool. Templates are extremely powerful uh, and there's so, so, so much that you can do with them. Um, using GPT-4 in this case, I created a template that turns ChatGPT into um, the Mongol warlord Genghis Khan. So you can click here and pick the system prompt for Genghis Khan and this is the description that I use. Uh, and then if you come down here and you decide to have a chat with Genghis Khan, it can be quite entertaining. If I just say, hi, how are you? <laughs> and then I hit enter, uh, this, is, this can be quite fun. So we'll, we'll give it a good go. And as you can see, Genghis here has a bit of an attitude. <laughs> he considers me a lowly soldier. This can be quite fun. And in fact, there are multiple ways that, that I've set this up using different systems because I've been having a lot of fun with this one. Hey everyone, uh, since I made this video, there's been a really important change at OpenAI regarding data for ChatGPT users. This is a little post by Logan. Logan is letting us know that OpenAI has released new tools for data management. But let me show you something. Let's go back really quick. This right here, you see that there's this new select box called Chat History and Training. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Chat History and Training? If you opt out of becoming a trainer for their AI, then you must give up a very important feature of the ChatGPT interface called Chat History. And there's not a lot of clarity on what happens once you turn this off. I think they would delete it within 30 days based on some of the things I saw. All of your history is gonna go away if you decide to opt out of being a trainer. Again, in this video, I'm showing you the difference between the web interface and the API interface and how you can actually get around this just by using the API or third-party graphical user interface. So really, there's nothing to panic here. And I do think that OpenAI, if they haven't already, are about to get a message loud and clear that chat history as a feature is one thing. Being a training subject is another thing. In fact, what they should do is give you a flag on a per chat basis. Do you want to be in the training set? Yes, no. That'd be the right thing to do. And then third is data privacy. None of this sits well, at least it doesn't sit well with me in terms of data privacy, although I think that they are trying to do the right thing. This is close, this is close, but it's not quite there. It doesn't change anything as far as I know about the APIs and how that data is used and the web interface and how that data is used, especially if a non-advanced user has no idea that this is here and doesn't come in here and click this little button and lose the chat history feature. Be being a training subject needs to be opt out like being on an email list, okay? That's it, it's really simple. Don't train on me unless I say, hey, great, uh, ask me. That's fair. Uh, choose and enjoy the rest of the video. Just know that you don't have to do all this. You don't have to install this software on your own system. There are absolutely ways to handle this without doing all of this stuff. And you may actually need some technology support to make this happen. It's not yet point and click. So what could you do if you don't wanna do any of this, you still wanted to use ChatGPT, and you want to protect your data. Well, then you go to OpenAI, you find their terms of use, you look for the link to the opt-out form, and this opts you out of your data that's used through the chat web interface, being used in their research and reviewed by humans. If you're trying to lead your organization forward using cutting edge technologies and artificial intelligence, now you know. Now you know how to use them safely, how to protect yourself, the multiple ways that you can do so. Look, this is a pretty big thing. This technology shift is probably as big as the invention of fire for humanity. Yeah, it's that big. I think it must be one of the most exciting times in human history to be alive. The possibilities are endless. I think this is going to lead to a positive and more human and much more productive human future. If you want to know more about how to use artificial intelligence and how to use tools for thought, I've got a whole series on using note-taking tools like Tana and Rome Research and how AI can be embedded in them to do more. So you can check out these videos. 
I'd recommend you get started maybe taking a look at these videos about how to integrate artificial intelligence with tools like Roam Research and LogSeq. And we can explore that further together in future videos.